Hey, I'm Mark. Let's go. Let's go. Work to do. What? You know, it is better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. No Mark Twain today. Pencils down. Close the doors. Why? Because I'm a history teacher and I'm going rogue. We're heading into bowl season. Love it. Yeah. College football playoff as well. Whatever. Hey, you know what we ought to do? Let's look at the schools that made out best in the last round of conference realignment. Which schools are better positioned now than they were 10 years ago? Who won and why? And let's see the winners from college conference realignment. Let's go rogue. Winner, Clemson University. For most of its history, the Atlantic Coast Conference, the ACC, has been known as a basketball conference, and rightfully so. North Carolina, NC State, Duke, Virginia. Football-wise, it was known as the uh, SEC's weak sister. The exception was Clemson. That perception changed with the addition of Florida State in 1990. In its efforts to create a big money football conference, the ACC added more schools, refugees from the imploding Big East in the 2000s, Miami, Virginia Tech, and Boston College. With 12 teams, the ACC moved to a divisional format with creatively named Atlantic Division and Coastal Division based on, well, really just nothing. Teams would play each divisional opponent and three teams from the other division. The two divisional champions played in the ACC championship game. As the final death blow was being given to the Big East, Louisville, Syracuse, and Pittsburgh jumped into the ACC. Prior to 2011 expansion, Clemson was 95 and 58, a 621 winning percentage. Since 2012, Clemson has gone 98 and 11, an 899 winning percentage. You know, Clemson resides in the Atlantic division of the ACC. Without Clemson, the Atlantic is the weaker of the two divisions, going actually 78 and 110 in the past four years, a 415 winning percentage. In the same time, the Coastal Division is 111 and 105, a 514 winning percentage. Perhaps it is that the 2012 expansion of the ACC to 14 teams simply corresponded closely to Dabo Sweeney become being elevated to head coach. In Dabo Sweeney's second season in 2010, the Tigers went 6-7, and seven, and they've had double-digit wins in each season since. The rise of Clemson also corresponds to the decline of Miami and Florida State and Virginia Tech and Louisville. We'll just come out and say it. The ACC is a bad football conference. And when you take a basketball conference, tell you when it's a football conference, and dilute it with more average teams, a coach like Dabo Sweeney can come along and dominate. Perhaps less is more. Another winner, the University of Wisconsin. Before Nebraska joined the conference in 2010, the Big Ten played a round-robin schedule among its 11 members. After 2012, the now 12-member conference went to two divisions, which they pretentiously called the Legends and Leaders divisions. From 2011 to 2013, Wisconsin was in the Leaders division, with conference heavyweights Ohio State and Penn State. With the addition of Rutgers and Maryland in 2014, though, the conference went to two seven-team divisions based specifically on geography, with the Badgers being in the West. In this arrangement, Wisconsin gets very average Nebraska, historically average Minnesota, and good but not great Iowa every year. They also play only two cross-divisional games instead of three. They don't face Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Michigan State every year. In some years, not at all. I like my chances in the Big Ten West. I just have to beat Iowa and whoever that year's pretender is. Over the past five years, the Big Ten West has had a 164 and 146 record. Only a 529 winning percentage compared to the East Division's 199 and 148 record. A 573 winning percentage. Between 2000 and the arrival of Maryland and Rutgers in 2014, Wisconsin was a respectable 125 and 58. After 2014, Wisconsin dominated the Big Ten West. The Badgers are 71 and 21, a 772 winning percentage. Clearly, not playing Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, and Michigan State every year has its advantages. Number three, 
the University of Georgia. It's a similar situation with Georgia in the Southeast Conference. For the past 15 years, the big dogs of the SEC have been in the West, Alabama, Auburn, and LSU. Prior to 2011, the 12-team SEC was divided into two geographic divisions, East and West. Georgia didn't play teams in the West. It does have to face Vanderbilt and Kentucky, which historically are not very good. South Carolina, which is good when Steve Spurrier is coaching them, and Florida and Tennessee, which have historically been pretty good, although Tennessee is still suffering from its Lane Kiffin experience. So Georgia has beat Florida and whoever this year's East Division pretender was. But when the conference expanded to 14 teams in 2011, teams only had to play two cross-division games. Texas A&M was placed in the West to create a rivalry between the Aggies and LSU, and the lesser-achieving Missouri was put in the East. Now a team from the West had another good, not great, team to beat. After a couple of good years, Missouri's declined, making the East an easier road to the SEC championship, one that Georgia has taken quite often. Between 2000 and 2011, Georgia was 114 and 44, a 722 winning percentage. Since 2011, Georgia's gone 82 and 24, a 774 winning percentage. Second best team to make out in conference realignment, the University of Utah. Utah was a founding member of the Western Athletic Conference in 1963, and the core of the WAC would become the Mountain West Conference in 1999. The Utes labored in mediocrity through much of its life, but fortune would shine on the Utes when the Utes hired Urban Meyer before the 2003 season. Meyer established Utah as the power school of the Mountain West, going 10-2 in Meyer's first season, then going 12-0 in 2004 with a pummeling of Pittsburgh in the Fiesta Bowl. The next year, Meyer bolted for Florida, and the Utes continued its winning ways under Kyle Whittingham. The highlight of Whittingham's tenure was going 13-0 in 2008, busting the BCS, and giving a beatdown to Alabama in the Sugar Bowl to end the season. When the conference realignment carousel started in 2011, Utah was invited to the Pac-12, along with Colorado University. The University of Utah has not had the same success in the Pac-12 as they had in the Mountain West. USC, UCLA, Stanford, and Oregon, it's a huge step up from New Mexico and Colorado State. But as members of the Mountain West, between 2000 and 2011, Utah was 96 and 39, a 7-11 winning percentage. In the Pac-12, Utah's gone 72 and 42, a still excellent 632 winning percentage winning the Conference's South Division in 2015 and 2018. Utah's also won a Pac-12 championship in baseball in 2016 and three championships in women's, women's gymnastics. What Utah got, uh, got most importantly was financial. Going from a conference that could afford to pay each school between five and eight million dollars a year to one that paid out 30.9 million last year. Big winner in conference realignment. The biggest winner in conference realignment was Texas Christian University. When the Southwest Conference disbanded in 1996, TCU watched as four Texas schools were invited to join the Big Eight and to create the Big 12. TCU wondered out loud what Baylor had done to deserve a place while they were relegated to Conference USA. Gary Patterson, longtime assistant to Horned Frogs head coach Dennis Francione, was elevated to head coach when Francione left for Alabama in 2000. And between 2000 and 2012, Texas Christian won a Conference USA championship and four Mountain West championships. In 2009, the Horned Frogs busted the BCS for the first time, losing to Boise State, but still finishing the year ranked number six. In 2010, the Frogs were undefeated and capped the season busting the BCS again, and this time defeated Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. After four schools left the Big 12 after the 2012 season, the conference asked Texas Christian to fill the vacancy. TCU didn't hesitate in responding. Between 2000 and 2012, TCU went 119 and 31, a 793 winning percentage. Since joining the big XII, TCU is 56 and 39, a 589 winning percentage, and shared a conference championship with Baylor in 2014. TCU has also won four big XII championships in baseball between 2014 and 2017, and won championships in tennis in 2016, 17, and 18. More importantly, the school was now in a Texas-based conference, a Texas-based conference that pays out 30-plus million dollars rather than the $8 million that they could have made from the Mountain West. TCU 
of all schools is the biggest winner in conference realignment. So how's your team done since the last round of conference realignment? Has your team been a winner or a loser? I appreciate you coming by. Subscribe if you enjoyed it. Check out some of my other videos. Sports, pop culture, weird historical stuff. I want to thank my producer, Casey Moulton, and Mr. Brent Allen for letting me borrow his studio here on the campus of Columbia High School. And remember, I'm Mark Haggard. I'm a history teacher, and I'm going rogue.